Hello everyone, my name is Wendy. In this video, we will go over a number of options for creating new images, opening images, and saving images in GIMP. GIMP is a powerful free open source software used for photo editing and graphic design. If you haven't already installed GIMP, you can pause this video and go over to the official website www.gimp.org to download and install the latest version of GIMP. I'll leave a link in the description. I'll be using Windows and GIMP 2.10.22, which is the latest version of GIMP at the time this video was created. So let's get started. To create a new image, let's go to the File menu and select New. Here in the dialog, you can choose from one of the predefined templates available in GIMP or make your own settings for a new image. Let's look at some of the existing templates first. There are a lot of options for predefined sizes and resolutions for printing and web page graphics. If you scroll down the menu, you'll find templates for different page sizes, business cards, etc., with a high resolution of 300 pixels per inch for printing. However, web banners screen sizes are set to 72 pixels per inch, which is sufficient for most web page graphics. And tablets and telephone templates all have different resolutions, so you'll have to check them out individually. You can create your own templates. As you can see, I have a YouTube thumbnail template with a YouTube icon so I can quickly access the template. If you would like to know how to create your own templates, I'll leave a link to the video tutorial in the description below. Now let's create a new image. You can set the size for a new image, however I'm just going to leave the default settings for now. By default, GIMP is set to pixels, however you can use different unit setups such as inches, millimeters, centimeters, etc. Next, select the page orientation. There are two buttons to toggle between portrait and landscape mode. Portrait mode is displayed in a vertical layout and landscape mode is displayed in a horizontal layout. Next, open the advanced options. Here you can modify the resolution as I mentioned earlier. 72 pixels per inch is sufficient for most web page graphics and you will need a higher resolution such as 300 pixels for printing. In color space, you can select whether you want the image to be RGB color or grayscale. I'll leave it to RGB color. The precision gamma and color file I'll also leave as default for now. In fill width, here you'll find several options, background color and foreground color. These colors will vary depending on the colors displayed in the color selector in the toolbox. Or you can choose white, transparency and pattern. It is possible to change the background later, so I'll just select white for this video. If you want to leave a comment, type in your name, then click OK. Now you have a clean canvas to start working on. There are other methods for creating new projects. Come back to the file menu and let's look at create. There are some handy options in here. You can start a new project from an image you have saved on your clipboard, from a web page, scanner, camera, and also from a screenshot. Let's check out the screenshot tool. In the dialog, you have options to take a screenshot of a single window or an entire screen. If you only have one screen, then just click snap and the image is automatically loaded on the canvas. However, if you have two or more screens, select screenshot of a single window, then click snap. Now another dialog pops up. Just drag the plus icon to the screen that you want to capture and the image is loaded onto the canvas. I'll just delete this image. Now let's look at how to open an image. There are a number of methods to do this, so feel free to use the option you find most comfortable or convenient, depending on the devices you are using. First, just click on Open. In the dialog, you have options to search. Just type in the name of the image. Or you can look at the recently used, or you can navigate through your computer files and find the folder with the image you want. Before we actually open the image, let's look at bookmark in the file, so we can quickly access it later on. The bookmarks are situated on the left in the Places menu. You can easily bookmark a file. Just click on the title to highlight it, then right click and select Add to Bookmarks. And when you want to remove the file from the Places menu, Select the file title, right click and select remove and this will remove the bookmark. Now select the image and click open. 
On occasions, a dialog might appear. Import the image from a color profile. Just click on Convert, and this will convert the image to GIMP's RGB color profile. You can select multiple images by holding down the Control or Shift key while selecting the images, and click Open, and they will open as separate images in GIMP. These beautiful images are from www.unsplash.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can also drag and drop images from your file explorer. If you drop them on the canvas, they will open as a new layer on the active image. However, if you want them as separate projects, you can drag and drop them just above the toolbox. As you can see, there are previews of all the images we just imported. If you'd like to transfer one of these images as a new layer on one of the other images, then let's go to the image preview area. Click and hold the mouse on the image you want to transfer over and drag it to the image preview. Then drag and drop it onto the canvas and it will be added as a new layer. Another method to open an image is straight from the File Explorer. Just right click on the title of the image and select Open with GIMP and the image will also be loaded as a separate image. Let's go back to the File menu. If you find all of this a little confusing, you can add an image quite easily from Open as Layers and from here you can select the image and it will be loaded as a new layer on the active image on the canvas. Let's move on and look at saving images. When you begin a new project or modify the active one, it's very important that you frequently save your work as you go. Select Save As and choose the folder you want to save the image in first. And when you save an image or composition, type in the name and it will be saved in GIMP's native format .xcf file format. This file format saves all the image data, including layers, channels, paths, transparency, etc. So you can continue your work at a later date without having to restart the project. Saving copies of your XCF files at different stages of a project is a good practice to get into, not only as a backup, but you can go back to these files and carry on editing them or make other variations to your work. Next, we'll look at exporting an image. To export an image, use Export As. In the Export dialog, Choose the file you want to save your work in and type in the name and the file format you require. Or you can click on the Select Image Type button and scroll down the menu and select the file format. GIMP can export to a large number of formats. However, some of the most common file formats are JPEG, BNG, GIF and TIFF. We'll wrap up here for this video. We've looked at starting a new, opening, saving and exporting images in GIMP. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Enjoy.